Hello, this is Matt from Calgary Business Blog, and this is a brief tutorial on business valuation or project valuation using the cash flow, free cash flow method. First thing that I want to go over is this hypothetical scenario that I constructed. It's a, a hospital that wants to determine if constructing a new outpatient orthopedic surgery center is a profitable operation. Their current facility offers some of the same or the same procedure with older technology and it requires an overnight stay. So there will be some cannibalization of their own business and there will be some cost savings. So this is a good example because it demonstrates some of the complexities of accurately predicting free cash flows. The key here is to do a flow of costs and flow of revenues analysis in order to determine how costs and revenues will be affected by this new project or business. So here we've got our likely scenario. We can say that it was determined by the higher-ups. As you can see, 14 procedures per day, 6,000 procedure price per procedure, allowances for bad debt, 40%, etc., etc. And here we've got reduction in inpatient costs and loss of inpatient revenues. So th this highlights the example of having to... Uh, follow the flow of costs and flow of revenues. Now, the first thing that you're going to need to do is uh, estimate the cost of capital and this was I demonstrated how to do this in a previous video. Now, you'll notice the spreadsheet is constructed much like an income statement. The, the, this is a common way of doing it and is, is really quite handy except for the income statement will end at earnings earnings before inc interest and after taxes and this is because of the basic business valuation rules which say we do not deduct interest these rules can be found on the Calgary business blog so the first thing we want to do is determine our year zero costs. So here we've got our building costs and our equipment costs. One thing that is often omitted or forgot is the opportunity costs. So in this case, it's the sale of the land that they are building this new uh, facility upon. This cost should be included in your business valuation. And now down again, we've got our capital expenditures, which is just an addition of our building construction costs and our investment in working capital, which we will say is 30% of the year one supplies. That's just the supplies on hand at the beginning of the year that we will want to have. Now here's another thing that I wanted to highlight, how the company accounts for supplies will affect how you value the business. This company is using the last in first out method and I will explain that a little bit more in the a little later. So here we have our net cash flows for year zero. Now our sales will simply be number of procedures times price times days in operation. This will be adjusted in year two and on by the inflation rate and the growth rate. These are both assumptions. Our fixed costs, pretty straightforward. Uh, I arbitrarily made these fixed costs and they will be adjusted by inflation. Now our variable costs. These will be a little bit different because we've got our loss of inpatient revenue and our reduction in inpatient costs. Again, this is to highlight how you must do a flow of cost and flow of revenue analysis to see how it affects its existing business. If it does not affect existing business, well, you're good to go. You don't need to go over this stuff. But you can see the loss of inpatient revenue is 20% of sales and our reduction in inpatient costs 
is 50% of the loss in inpatient revenues. And this, summed up, gives our total variable costs. And these are just adjusted for inflation and growth rate. And that brings us down to EBITDA, earnings before income taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And that is simply our sales minus our total vari variable costs and total fixed costs. And now we've got depreciation. We have to minus that from EBITDA in order to determine what our tax rate will be. And that is because depreciation is essentially a tax shield. Now you will have to check with the accounting department to determine what form of depreciation that they use. Not all companies use straight line depreciation as you can see here. And so our earnings before interest and taxes is simply our EBITDA minus our uh, depreciation. And this will give you our tax rate, which is our EBIT times our tax rate. And now we have our earnings before interest and after taxes. We're going to want to add, and you can see this is kind of where our income statement like spreadsheet ends. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add depreciation back onto our cash flows because depreciation is not a cash expense. And this is where we come back to our investment in working capital. You can see here that we started off with 30% of our supplies. In year one, we bought 100% of the supplies. So this essentially carries over 30% into the next year. But because we use the last in first out accounting method, we will have to adjust that cost by the inflation rate. And over the next years, it will be adjusted for growth and inflation. So this just highlights another example of where common online tutorials miss out on the subtleties of the free cash flows valuation method. And so down here we have our net cash flows and these are simply our EBIT plus our dis depreciation expense and minus our investment in working capital. And that goes through all the way to year six. So now we've got to determine whether this project is a ongoing concern or if it terminates. So let's assume it will terminate in year five at first. So then it is simply a discount of cash flows to present value terms plus the initial investment. That's just how you have to do it in Excel. And we get a net present value. Now if we consider the business a going concern, meaning a perpetuity, with no growth, we calculate that value by taking the year six uh, value and divide it by your risk-adjusted weighted average cost of capital. And then you convert that into present value terms. Now, considering the considering it as a perpetuity with the growth, Again, that's the year six discounted ca or ca net cash flows, and you divide that by the difference between the weight adjusted cost of capital or risk adjusted cost of capital and your growth uh, assumption. So that's essentially 0 0.09676 minus 0 0.05 to give you 4.0.0. 476 <laughs> and then you adjust that for present value terms and you can see here that the vast majority when considered a perpetuity 
of the value of the business is after year six. So you have to determine whether these assumptions are correct. Is it going to just go on forever making those streams of cash flows? Um, is that a valid assumption? And then uh, it's common to do a sensitivity analysis after this, adjusting the uh, procedures per day and assigning uh, percentage values like a 60% chance that uh, it, it'll move down to seven procedures per day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you can uh, create analysis like those, adjusting for the probability of declining cash flows or declining procedure from declining procedures, etc. So uh, that's the tutorial on. Uh, the business valuation model using the free cash flows method. Uh, hope this helped. Hope it was a, a bit different than the other tutorials you see out there showing some of the subtleties and the traps that uh, commonly people fall into. Okay, thanks. Bye.